Hello friends, I am here with the essay titled The Praise of Chim Chimney Sweepers written by uh, Charles Lamb. Now this essay is a part of the essays of Elia. The essays of Elia which uh, comprise of more than 30 essays, uh, they were published for the first time in a serialized version in the London magazine in 1820 onwards, 1820 onwards and they were collected together and uh, published as um, the essays of Elia in 1823 and another edition too came out a few years later and Elia is the name that uh, Charles Lamb called himself by in his essays and the characteristic feature of Charles Lamb's essays is that they are uh, highly autobiographical, very personal, very conversational, at the same time they express, they exhibit uh, a lot of erudition. He makes frequent, too frequent I should say, references to uh, characters from um, in, in his life, maybe his friends or you have characters taken from mythology, from religion. So there are so many uh, uh, kind of illusions there. And so reading an essay uh, of Charles Lamb, uh, though is a pleasurable experience, is definitely not a simple task uh, because you uh, he uses a lot of bombastic words sometimes, which makes it almost impossible to read an essay of his, especially now. Maybe if we were contemporaries of Elia or uh, uh, Charles Lamb, we would, uh, it would be easier for us to understand or relate to the things that he, to the references that he makes. But so far removed from uh, Charles Lamb's period, he, he was one uh, of the writers of the Romantic Age. Okay, so so far removed from uh, that period, we find it quite difficult to, uh, to, to figure out what he is talking about who he is referring to and some of the words that he uses, uh, his vocabulary is sometimes quite daunting that you have to keep a dictionary by your side before you sit down to read an essay of Charles Lamb. In spite of this, his essays, they abound in good humor, there is so much of innocence uh, and, and there is so much of uh, goodwill. Uh, love of uh, humanity, all this in his essays. Now this particular essay as I told you is about the chimney sweeps and the chimney sweeps or chimney sweepers were, um, I, I should definitely uh, and when we come to this particular essay, I think I should tell you a few things about these chimney sweepers before we can go on to the essay proper. Now London is a huge city as we know, thickly populated and very crowded and in 16th it was often, uh, uh, it was very common place uh, for uh, fires to break out in London and cause damage but in 1666 there was one great fire, the great fire of London which uh, caused extensive damage to the city and after that particular the great fire of London of 1666 uh, I mean that particular fire had a lot of impact cultural and economic and even we should say architectural impact on London and uh, so the design of houses instead of having open fires from which a fire could easily spread into a conflagration um, it was insisted that um, the houses have closed kind of fireplaces with chimneys and as a result uh, the chimneys you must have seen pictures of uh, chimneys they are long elongated structures um, and it was in those days more, almost all houses big houses had chimneys and chimneys are very narrow as we can see from the pictorial representations of chimneys and from, and from photographs and um, the soot, the black soot from uh, the smoke and the fire would deposit on the sides of the chimney and it would kind of uh, 
uh, keep falling down and so it was very very uh, important to keep these places clean and so uh, there were chimney sweepers employed for this purpose of cleaning chimneys and owing to the very narrow uh, size of these chimneys it was impossible for an adult or a grown up to get into a chimney and clean it and so began a very uh, you know sickening and uh, heart rending practice of employing children as chimney sweepers children as young as 4 years old up to maybe 11 or 12 were uh, given the task of cleaning the chimneys and they used to come uh, to the home they had a, a song or a, a, a particular noise a call they would make to announce their arrival and they would get into the chimneys from the bottom and there was no space for them to uh, stand up straight or at least they couldn't even stand there because you know a chimney is just a a kind of a long space where there are no platforms or anything built and so the children had to creep up the chimney they had brushes with them they would as they go they would clean uh, the sides of the chimney the black powder of the chimney of the burnt coal would fall on them and as they go up they would clean clean and finally they would come out at the top of the chimney and they would give a loud cry or a shout to say that they have finished so that was how it was done and uh, this became a uh, because most big houses fashionable houses had chimneys and they had to be cleaned and so this practice of employing children though many people knew that it was not right that it was cruel everybody turned a blind eye to it because they could not do without these little chim chimney sweeps and so chimney sweeps were a common sight in the early mornings the hours before dawn they would go to houses and they would start their cleaning before the cooking and the other uh, the use of the fire was needed so they would go early in the morning and uh, there were um, some master sweeps master sweeps were grown up men who had been uh, little chimney sweeps and once they grow up they cannot go into uh, the chimneys and so they would become master sweeps and they will be assigned a group of little chimney sweeps and they would uh, take these chimney sweeps to various homes and make them work there that was how it is and um, there are many stories about how uh, children were bought and children were sold from workhouses workhouses were kinds of uh, poor homes uh, in those days and especially later in the time of uh, charles dickens in in victorian england we had the workhouses where the poor people without employment were sent to and uh, children also were sent to uh, workhouses uh, unemployed men and women they were actually supposed to be trained to earn a livelihood they were given some rudiments of education reading writing arithmetic and uh, there are so many stories of the cruelties uh, that were meted out to these poor helpless people in the workhouses uh charles dickens himself has spoken of such workhouses in many of his novels charlie chaplin the world famous uh, actor comedian he too in his autobiography has mentioned uh the time that he spent in the lambeth workhouse with his along with his elder brother his mother too was sent to another workhouse because she too was unemployed or they opted to go into the workhouse because they could not survive outside so the workhouse and so children from these workhouses were often bought at a cheap price to uh, to work as chimney sweeps and there are also stories about how children were kidnapped from their homes uh, and this particular practice um, you can see that in this essay charles lamb uh, 
alludes to he speaks about that and uh, so many a home lost uh, a child because of this kidnapping to become chimney sweeps and again uh, there were a lot of health hazards these children were subjected to because they were very young from 4 to 5 to 6 years old when they started out and so their constant uh, restriction imposed on their bodies because they spent most of their time inside these chimneys it led to deformation of their bodies their bones were kind of twisted their growth was stunted and uh, because of the unhealthy conditions in the sense they were always covered in soot and they were not given regular baths it was once a week or once a month that they were permitted to take a bath so they were always wearing dirty clothes filthy clothes that were covered with soot and this intake of soot uh, at a very close you know uh, range it uh, made them sick they had all kinds of diseases uh, uh, like suffocation and uh, other accompanying diseases if they had problems with their skin because of sometimes the the fireplace would still be hot and so the heat in the chimney would cause welts on their body and it was even later uh, later it was found out that this also created cancer scans of the scrotum uh, when these pe children became uh, teenagers and mostly the chimney sweeps were uh, boys but there were a few girls also who were sent into this profession so on the whole the life of a chimney sweeper was hell it was dark as the chimney in which they spent most of their uh, hours they had to wake up very morning early morning uh, and they had no pleasure uh, they had no chance of experiencing the pleasures of childhood because their lives were kind of imprisoned within these chimneys so that and there were many cases of children falling from uh, the heights into their deaths and children getting caught sometimes you know when they crawl up they used to get caught uh, um, without I mean, being unable to move sometimes they had to pass through extremely narrow flues and pipes and they would get stuck there and by the time somebody breaks the wall and removes the bricks and uh, yeah, takes them out children would die such cases were also reported in spite of all this the practice went on for a long time uh, until much later the injustice and the grossness of the practice was brought out and uh, there were a lot of people who took, took up the cause of the poor chimney sweeps who fought to get rid of this uh, who fought to put an end to this inhuman practice right in the heart of London city and London which was supposed to be the capital of a mighty empire and it was a shame on them to allow their children to suffer so and so finally the practice came to an end and uh, uh, innovators they came up with other methods of uh, cleaning chimneys instead of using live human children and so that is about the chimney sweeps essay Charles Lamb speaks about the chimney sweeps he is quite ambivalent about his attitude towards uh, the chimney sweepers he doesn't really uh, seem to speak against it but then uh, he definitely brings out the difficulties these uh, people were faced with and another poem another contemporary poet uh, William Blake William Blake too wrote a poem titled the chimney sweep which is about a chimney sweeper a poor woebegone creature who is lamenting his sad plight so many writers uh, novelists and um, uh, even this uh, there is this uh, the work called the water babies uh, of Charles Kingsley he too writes about the sad plight of chimney sweeps so they became a, a kind of a, a recurring image in many of the works of the contemporary literature now let us go on to the essay 
it's a long rambling essay as uh, as usually you know charles lamb's essays are he talks to us in a very conversational style rambling on and on taking digressions when and where he pleases and um, you know sprinkling his essays with a lot of words that sometimes baffle you and uh, you have to keep running to your dictionary on and off so that you can proceed with the essay so let's take a look at it this is how he begins i like to meet a sweep understand me not a grown sweeper old chimney sweepers are no by no means attractive but on one of those tender novices blooming through the first negritude the maternal washings not quite effaced from the cheek such as come forth with the dawn or somewhat earlier with their little professional notes sounding like the peep peep of a young sparrow or liker to the matin lark should i pro- pronounce them in their aerial essence not seldom anticipating the sunrise so he says that he uh, likes to meet chimney sweeps not the older ones nothing attractive about older adult chim- chimney sweeps but then the small ones the little ones those tender novices blooming through their first negritude negritude is blackness here he says the ones the little ones who have just started out on the career as the horrendous career as chimney sweeps and who ha- are just beginning to get blackened by the soot the maternal washings not quite effaced from the cheek means maternal washings here only means the childishness the innocence it is still not washed away from there it is still not washed away or it is still not concealed under the soot and these come early with the dawn they come somewhat early even before the sun rises and that is why he and they make a noise they have a professional cry notes mean song or a professional cry uh, which resembles the peep peep of a young sparrow or he says they sound like the matin lark matin is morning the bird songs of the morning and uh, the lark that sings early in the morning at the time of the sunrise and so he says that um, the sounds the, the noise that these people make the little chimney sweeps reminds him of the sounds of the early morning birds and uh, the spa- the lark is a bird that cannot be easily seen it can only be heard because it flies high and that is why he says in their aerial essence not seldom anticipating the sun's aerial essence are in the great heights so here too i guess he is also suggesting that these little uh, chimney sweeps are also kind of aerial because they are not down on the ground but instead they are climbing up the chimneys and uh, it would be dark inside and often to mitigate their fear they would sing songs as they go up in order to hide their fear in order to forget uh, the pain maybe they would engage in singing songs so he might be referring to that too and he compares it to the musical notes of the bird songs high in the sky i have a kindly yearning towards these dim specks poor blots innocent blacknesses so he says uh, he has a great love for them dim specks poor blots innocent blacknesses so they are considered to be specks dim specks because speck you know is a is a dot black dot a black spot and so he uh, calls them dim because uh, the soot has started having its impact on the constant exposure to soot has dimmed their color dimmed their complexion darkened their complexion poor blots poor blots again poor maybe kids small children innocent blacknesses though they are outwardly black they are actually innocent inside so he brings the two together innocent blacknesses I reverence these young Africans of our own growth these almost clergy imps who sport their cloth without assumption and from their little pulpits on the tops of chimneys in the nipping air of a december morning preach a lesson of patience to mankind 
So he says, I reverence, I worship, I respect these young Africans of our own growth. So what does he mean by young Africans of our own growth? Uh, now, even in his time, definitely he knew that the Africans were dark complexioned. And so these are not Africans uh, or people who have come from Africa, but they are English children. That is why he says young Africans of our own growth. They are not, uh, they don't belong to the category of slaves who had been brought in from another country. No, these are children, British English children who have been altered to resemble young Africans. And they are also almost clergy imps. These are almost clergy imps who sport their cloth without assumption. So what he means there in those few uh, lines is that um, these little children resemble or at least remind him of the clergyman. Clergyman means the priests who preach from the pulpits. Now the pulpit in, you know in the church is the, is the elevated place where the priest stands and addresses uh, his congregation. And so these people they too seem to preach but where do they preach from? From the top of the chimneys. Once they finish cleaning and they reach the top, they shout out from there. So that is why he calls them as little priests who are standing or shouting from their pulpits. In the nipping air of the December morning, in the cold air, when children uh, in other homes or maybe in the home that is being cleaned, there other children would be sleeping. In the early December morning, they would be very warmly wrapped in blankets and they would be having a happy sleep uh, and at that time you have these little children in the cold out in the nipping air of here nipping means the biting cold of a December morning preach a lessons of patience to mankind and what are they doing through their very action through their very uh, the, through the very work that they are doing they are preaching lessons of patience to mankind. That is what a priest does, isn't it? He preaches good lessons to mankind. He tries to better them by giving them lessons of patience and love and kindness and charity. Here, these children teach a lesson of patience to mankind because they need a lot of patience to endure through the difficulties of the job and they need patience to stay inside the chimney, to clean the chimney, to endure the pain that they go through, uh, the difficulty when they inhale the, the, the smoke. And so they too, in one way, are preachers of patience to mankind. So he, uh, Charles Lamb says, or Elia says, I respect the chimney sweepers. And then he recalls how when he himself was a child, how he used to have a great pleasure, a mysterious pleasure in witnessing their operation. Means he enjoyed watching uh, the work of the chimney sweeps. To see a chit no bigger than oneself enter, one knew not by what process, into what seems the forces averni. So uh, he to see a chit means a small insignificant child no bigger than oneself because he himself was of that size at that time and a child would enter one knew not by what process what seemed to be a forces everni now forces everni forces generally uh, means uh, the narrow passage from the mouth to the pharynx a very narrow passage between from which leads from the mouth to the pharynx so that is the forces so here this particular passage or the inside of the chimney reminds him of a very narrow kind of a path or a small space and he wonders how because the children of the house were definitely not permitted to get into the chimneys children were hired from outside to do that work and so he used to wonder how he used to admire these children for you know uh, crawling into these very narrow spaces to pursue him in imagination as he went sounding on through so many dark stifling caverns horrid shades so 
he would pursue him in the match he, he can see the child getting into the chimney and then he goes out of sight and so he used to pursue him through his imagination though he cannot see with his eyes in his mind's eye he would go after this boy as he navigates through the treacherous the stifling cavern stifling in the sense the suffocating caverns or caves and we know how children are afraid of darkness and they imagine that there are all kinds of shadows and shades coming to swallow you so the poor child the, it he goes in through all these stifling caverns and horrid shades and uh, to shudder with the idea that now surely he must be lost forever and so as this child goes up the child who's standing here that is elia who stands down there when there is no noise heard from top sometimes it is a song sometimes you can hear the sound of the brush but if there is no sound heard immediately he thinks oh no maybe the child is lost to revive at hearing his feeble shout of discovered daylight and finally when the child who is inside reaches the top of the chimney he, uh, he gives a shout and that feeble shout is heard through the chimney why is it feeble because it has to travel through the entire length of the chimney so though it might be loud there it a very feeble noise can be heard from inside and so at the other end of the chimney this eagerly waiting child he hears this feeble cry uh, the shout of discovered daylight and then a oh, fullness of delight running out of doors to come just in time to see the sable phenomenon emerge in safety the brandished weapon of his art victorious like some flag waved over a conquered citadel and then as soon as he hears a feeble cry he jumps out and runs out into uh, uh, he runs outdoors and he runs and stands at a distance from where we, he can see the top of the chimney and what would he see he would see a sable phenomenon sable is black a black creature a specter like creature completely black it is this child who is covered in soot he comes emerge in safety safely in one piece to so the child the black child or in fact the blackened child i should say holding this uh, brush he comes out and uh, it it appears to this person or he, uh, charles lamb he compares that to a flag which has been put up above a conquered citadel citadel is a fort and so when a when an enemy conquers the citadel of the enemy he puts up his flag to announce his victory similarly here the child having victoriously completed the arduous task of navigating through a chimney he comes out in triumph and stands there holding his weapon or the brush i seem to remember having been told that a bad sweep was once left in a stack with his brush to indicate which way the wind blew and he also remembers a story about how a sweep was left in a uh, stack with his brush so that uh, you to know like a wind cock to know which side the wind was moving so that uh, a, a person was made to stand one of the bad sweeps bad sweeps maybe a person who does not do the job well and he was left in the stack with his brush to indicate which way the wind blew that's a quite a sadistical game i would say of uh, or a way of punishment to know uh, how the wind blew uh, to make a human being stand there and maybe uh, to see uh, the the suit flying away from him in any one direction i don't know what exactly is the logic behind uh, making a sweep stand there as a weathercock anyway uh, it was an awful spectacle certainly not much unlike the old stage direction in macbeth where the apparition of a child crowned with a tree in his hand rises so he says that this story though he had not seen it himself it must have been an awful uh, spectacle or maybe he is referring to this child standing at the top of the chimney with his black brush with his hair all unkempt all black 
and this reminds him of a line from Shakespeare's play Macbeth. There is this uh, in Act 4, Scene 1, where uh, Macbeth goes to meet the three witches. There, there are three uh, kind of spectres that he meets, or three apparitions that he meets, and one of them, which is uh, I think the third one, is the apparition of a child, apparition of a child crowned with a tree in his hand, rises. So a child with a tree in his hand. So that is what this figure of the chimney sweeper standing on atop the chimney with his brush reminds Elia of. Reader, if thou meetest one of these small gentry in the early rambles, it is good to give him a penny. It is better to give him two pens. If it be starving weather and to the proper troubles of his hard occupation, a pair of kibed heels be superadded and demand on the humanity will sure rise to a test. So he implores uh, to the readers that if at all you happen to meet one of these small gentry, these little gentlemen in the early in thy early rambles, ramble is walk and so when you go out on one of your early morning walks, please give him a penny, please spare a penny or you can even give him two pence especially if it is starving weather, maybe winter or some such weather and uh, you know the difficulties of his hard occupation, a pair of kibbed, kibbed heels. So kibbed is um, cracked or chapped feet. You know how if you are exposed to too much of cold, your feet get cracked and when there are too many cracks, it's quite uh, painful in your heel. And so he says that these children, because they are exposed to the cold, and another thing is that these children often had to, uh, often uh, could wear only the minimal clothing, because they couldn't. The, the 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 openings were so narrow that they could not wear thick, warm clothes. They had to be stripped to the minimum, maybe the underclothes often when they went up to clean. And so they were exposed to the cold and they often had cracked heels. So he says that if possible, uh, please give them some extra money, taking into, co into consideration the difficulties of his hard occupation. 